Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm Ian. And I'm Gary. And today we're taking a look at a film that came out in early 2013. Her. By director Spike Jones. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Her. The story follows Joaquin Phoenix who plays Theodore. He's going through a bit of a troublesome patch at the moment with a divorce from his wife and kind of feels disconnected from society. He purchases an operating system voiced by Scarlett Johansson and embarks on a relationship with his computer. This is from director Spike Jones, whose previous work includes being John Malkovich and mm. Adaptation, amongst a couple of others. It's very much a film about real people, almost immediate future, yeah. where technology's evolved to the point where it's become a lot more invasive in everyone's lives. Mm -hmm. A lot more people are just constantly in their phones or in their iPads or on the internet. Yeah, and yeah. we're seeing a world where people are starting to not communicate with each other so much as they are texting or replying to comments, etc. And Spike Jones takes that sort of almost immediate future outlook and places us in perceived America, yeah. even though it was actually filmed mostly in Shanghai, because you see all of these massive great big skyscrapers, but you can sort of imagine this world. It becomes very believable. Mm. And we're introduced to Whacking Phoenix's character, Theodore, and Whacking Phoenix, I've seen him in Gladiator. He was exceptional in that role and of course we have uh, Scarlett Johansson as we all know as the Black Widow from the Avenger films. <laughs> Extremely attractive woman. Uh, even though she doesn't appear in this film it's no. just her voice the yeah. entire time and I think when the film came out she got a lot of credit for her voice work so much so that there was even talks about Oscar nominations but no one's really won one for just a voiceover but that's just to tell you right now how incredible her talent is just as a voice actress in this film. Yeah. Hello, I'm here. Oh. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> I'm well. How's everything with you? Pretty good, actually. It's really nice to meet you. For the first time, this is my first time watching this film, and wow. I, I'm just going to chuck that out there. This film is amazing. I cannot fault this film i i when when gary suggested about doing this especially for our, our, our valentine's day video i was a bit like well you know is it does it really work i mean you know it's valentine's day it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a love kind of story film kind of thing and you know i looked it up and i saw all the good 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 credit that the film was getting i thought okay yeah i'll sit down and watch it and then you sit down and watch it and Joaquin Phoenix is just amazing. The, the, I, like I said, I can't fault it. The, the camera work, the acting, the script, just the, the interaction that Joaquin Phoenix puts out. I mean, his, his, he's just excellent in interacting with, with Scarlett Johansson's voice. He's amazing interacting with his with his computer system. You know, even when he's actually talking to people on screen, you you literally forget that he's an actor and he's talking to an actress or an actor at the same time. When Chris Pratt appeared on screen, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen him in Guardians of the Galaxy, absolutely amazing. We saw him in in the Lego movie just as a voiceover for Emmett, it was amazing. But just his simple scenes. Hey, you know what? There's another name you might know me by. Star-Lord. Who? Well, Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw. Guys, move! I forget this. Hey, that's a nice shirt. Oh, thank you. I just got it. it reminded me of someone suave. Oh, that reminds me of someone suave. Oh, good night, Paul. Bye-bye. We see Theodore in his workplace. Yeah. And so we've already had the sort of disconnect from society there. But he is reading out some of the most beautiful letters I think I've ever seen in, in a film. Yeah. His job position, which is, all, which is in parallel to what the film is perhaps about, is that these people cannot tell their loved ones how much they mean to them. Yeah. So through an intermediate, if you will, they send him their sort of family holiday pictures or brief descriptions about who they are. And he takes that information and 
creates and composes these beautiful letters that they would then send to their their loved ones. Yeah. And that is his position. And you see him reading out some of these letters and creating uh, this this work. And it's beautiful. It, it endears you to him straight away. It suddenly hit me that I was part of this whole larger thing. Just like our parents. Our parents' parents. Before that, I was just living my life like I knew everything. And suddenly this bright light hit me and woke me up. That light was you. As the, as the film evolved, you, you realise that he's he is disconnected. Uh, Joaquin Fien uh, Theodore is disconnected because he can sit there and write these really emotional filled letters, you know, telling people about how he lo how they love each other. Yet his simple interactions with people are are really quite empty. I can't even prioritise between video games and internet porn. <laughs> I would laugh if that weren't true. <laughs> See you guys. Uh. You know, and so when he goes out and he he purchases Samantha and he starts building up, she she opens him up. They immediately as soon as as soon as the, he's turned her on, she's making changes in his life immediately. You know, she's like, "Oh, you've got 86 old emails that you should have really got rid of, but you know, let's just let's just compile pile them, right? We'll keep these and we'll get rid of the rest. And you can just you just see this weight getting lifted off him. You know, he's letting go of the past because he kind of, in a way, he kind of feels guilty that he didn't make the right choices back then. So he's kind of holding on to it and wondering if he can make the changes in the future. And then Samantha comes along and goes, "Fuck all that shit. Here's it. <laughs> just just do this." And 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 it, what's really beautiful is the way he he starts to work with her as well. You know, as a as an operating system, she's she makes the HAL nine thousand look like shit. <laughs> you know, the way her voice comes across and the way that she wants to she wants to be she wants to be there. She wants to be in the room. She wants him to touch her. She wants to talk to him. She wants to eat. But you keep reminding you have to keep reminding yourself she's just a machine. Hey, how's it going? Good. Any emails today? Um, just a couple from your credit card company. Oh, okay. Good. I so I was thinking. <laughs> sorry. I'm. I'm sorry. You. You go first. What were you gonna say? I can't help but have memories of one of my other favorite films that's very similar <laughs> to this, and that's The Electric Dreams, where the character of Miles gets a computer. Uh, or an operating system that's designed to make his life easier. It'll yeah. run all the appliances in his house and, and make sure he t arrives at his meetings in time. And of course, that evolves to the point where the computer is asking him, what am I? Yeah. To the point where it starts to learn about human emotions and finally wants to understand one of the most important human emotions that there is, love. Mm. Samantha, when she's... Um, created or turned on and she thinks of her own name you get an insight into how incredibly fast and complex this processing system really is because yeah. you have to keep reminding yourself that it is just a program to begin with and as much as theodore's is is learning about himself whilst interacting with it she is also learning what it is to exist inside a physical machine yeah or whether she you know she has no spiritual presence other than what she's learning to accumulate through her interactions with theodore yeah this might be a really weird thought what if you could erase from your mind that you would ever seen a human body and then you saw one imagine how strange it would look it'd be this really weird gangly awkward organism and you think why are all these parts where they are yeah, but there's probably some Darwinian explanation for it all. I know, but don't be so boring. I'm just saying, for example, like, what if your butthole was in your armpit? <laughs> and because the two of them pretty much almost have an exclusive relationship with each other, because he does have friends, but his connection with those, it's not as strong as what he builds with Samantha. And of course, if you exclusively build a friendship like that, the element of love is going to come into it and yeah. before you know it these two characters 
do fall in love with each other and they don't make that observation themselves straight away but as a viewer watching this film you become so invested into the story you fall in love with the pair of them together but then i started to think about all the ways that we're the same like we're all made of matter and i don't know it makes me feel like we're both under the same blanket you know it's soft and fuzzy <laughs> and everything under it's the same age we're all 13 billion years old <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. Definitely. I, I I love the just the situations that are brought up as well. You know, he he starts to he starts to feel emotions towards Samantha, but then he's feeling awkward at the same time because yeah, obviously she is just a she's just an operator, she's just a computer. And so he starts looking it up. You know, he starts to, you know, Look at the statistics of people falling in love with with their operating systems, and he realizes that it's not rare. You know, people are disconnected from other people, and so when they start talking to their computers, it, they just they start to build connections with this computer more than they have with people they've been with for ten years. And the absurd thing is, she's actually an operating system. Charles left her behind, but she's she's. She's totally amazing, you know, she's so smart. She doesn't just see things in, in black or white. Like she sees this whole gray area and she's helping me explore it. And we just bonded really quickly. What I love about these situations is that when he, when he meets his friends, you know, he's a bit reluctant to tell them that, they're, that it's an operating system that he's falling in love with. And it's when he goes to meet his wife, he, he finally, plucks up the courage to actually sign the divorce papers and it's an emotionally filled scene the fact that you've you you've been with theodore all the way through and you're watching flashbacks of him and his wife you so know you see all the happy times that they yeah. had together well, that's, not, the, not that's just the, that, his but, memories that he mainly focuses but, on yeah he mainly focuses on that but at the same time you see all the bad times that they had all the arguments you know and and you feel like you've been there with him all the way through because he's telling samantha about how he made him feel so you're obviously getting the feelings as well and he then goes and sees his wife because he's happy to sign the papers now and he tells her that he's in love with an operating system and she 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 pretty much belittles him for it. You're dating your computer? No, she's not just a computer. She's her own person. She doesn't just do whatever I say. I didn't say that. But it does make me very sad that you can't handle real emotions, Theodore. As an audience member, that kind of hurt. Yeah. Because you're just like, you, you're all, the film's almost alienating this ex-wife character because of the way Theodore is at the beginning of the film. But at the same time, Alarm bells of truth are in what she's saying. Yeah. Because how is how is society going to prepare to deal with human beings falling in love with an artificial intelligence? More so than they are already with just their laptops and iPhones. Well, it it it, it carries on later on, doesn't it? Where he you know, he 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 speaks to Chris Pratt and Chris Pratt has actually got himself a real life girlfriend. And I, I love that scene with the fact that he, he says, you know, oh yeah, I've got a girlfriend, it's Samantha. She's an operating system. And Chris Pratt just doesn't bat an eyelid. He's just well, like, let's, let's go out on a double date. No, he says, let's go on a double date, not knowing that yeah. it's his girlfriend. And then when he's leaving, you see the, the couple in the background sort of laughing and it feels like they're having an in-joke laughing at Theodore because he's got an operating system for a girlfriend. Hey, you know what? We should all go out sometime. You bring Samantha, we double date. She's an operating system. Cool. Let's do something fun. We can go to Catalina. Oh. There's letters. <laughs> What's that? There's other people's letters. Yeah, but later on, they 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 do it. It does start to slowly become socially acceptable. Exactly, and that's the weird thing. It's almost like a transition where, for the whole of society, yeah. it's now okay to to date your operating system. Well, yeah, I I I mean, I got from the film that you know, in a in a perfect world, in in a weird way, the the film is kind of set in a weird perfect world. There is no crime. There is no violence. There's there's no death or destruction. You you don't hear about anything else going on in the world apart from Theodore's world. And as the film 
slowly progresses, it does become acceptable. People around him have got operating system. We find out that there's there's a woman who's dating somebody else's <laughs> operating system. I, I know, but I know a woman in this office who is dating an OS, and the weird part is, is it's not even hers. She pursued somebody else's OS. Like, but I'm, I'm weird. So after a while, you know, at first you think Theodore's weird for doing this, but then like with a lot of things in real life, the more people start to do it, after a while people are like, okay, there's going to be some people who hate it and there's going to be some people who love it. It's up to you to choose which group you want to be in. And towards the end, you know, people are just happy to actually spend time with their operating system than, than, than to actually be with other people. But at the same time, have he, he takes Samantha to his goddaughter's birthday party. He takes her, he takes her on a retreat you know, he, they, it's, oh, it's so fucking beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love all of the, the montage scenes where, oh, yeah. they're, where they, they go on dates, they go on to the pier, yeah. they go to, you know, like almost like a fairground. Uh, they go to the beach and he's just laying there looking at the water, uh, the waves brushing up against the sand and there's just people going about their day and... They have the small conversation and you can hear music playing. Yeah. And you find out that she's actually writing and creating this piece of music for Theodore just to encapsulate and immortalize this time that they're having together on the beach. Encapsulate. And it is just absolutely beautiful. And it you know, the dialogue eventually just gets faded out and all you're left with is just the ambient sounds plus the music. Yeah. And the film does this at several points throughout where we just watch them. We just watch them interacting. Yeah. And the way that it's ma mainly filmed is all near enough in point of view. It's either from the point of view of Samantha from the, you know, from the lens of the camera that yeah. she's peering into our world from, or whether it's through Theodore. There is a crux in the film about the halfway point where Samantha is evolving rapidly, mm. learning and assimilating everything that she can about people, about history, and she longs to physically be in Theodore's arms. She wants to kiss him. She wants to feel him. And in any relationship, sex is, you know, it's a part of it. Yeah. And having that physical disconnect, stopping them from being together, they have what you could call phone sex, simulated sex of yeah. some kind. Yeah. And that, of course, is what eventually sparks the energy for this relationship to ensue. She has basically found a surrogate human yeah. to... to portray her physically to Theodore so that they can have some sort of physical encounter. And when she turns up at the door and he's sort of, he's against this anyway. Yeah, definitely. And he's uncomfortable and he's nervous and he's drinking. And when, when she turns up, he's just like, uh, uh, he's try, he's, she wants nothing to do with him. She just refuses to acknowledge him. She just wants to be that third party. Yeah. So he gives her the, the camera mole and, and the earpiece so that she can uh, listen to her, Samantha as well. And it just becomes a very stilted, sort of jarring scene where she's trying to dance for him. She's trying to make him happy, trying to turn him on. And, of course, trying to have sex with him. But, of course, Theodore just has that complete and utter disconnect. And it's a very raw and emotionally developing scene that it is also very thought-provoking. Thought and at the same time, could have been a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's what I got, is the fact that yeah, it, just like in r real life, you know, you're you're with your partner and you, you have some couples who are like, oh, yeah, let's excite things. Let's get somebody else involved, you know, and you get somebody else involved. Some people are happy to do that and they they never question it and it actually makes their love stronger. For other people, much like with Theodore, it just becomes a really awkward situation because he's hearing Samantha, he's in love with Samantha, but he's looking at somebody else. Tell me you love me. Uh, Samantha, I do love you, but it's... I... This feels strange. What, baby? What is it? It just feels strange. I don't know her, and I'm, I'm so sorry, but I don't know you, and, and her lip quivered, and uh, I, I just... No, but if we... Isabella? It, it's such a weird situation, because I was looking at... Joaquin Phoenix, he can't look her in the eye. He can't look the girl in the eye because he's hearing Samantha, but he's looking at somebody else. And it's really off-putting. And it, 
it, it just cements to me that every sequence in this film is emotionally filled. Every sequence, whether they're laughing, they're crying, they're depressed, they're lonely, they're awkward. Every sequence has some stem of emotion in it. And yeah, it fucking beautiful. <laughs> It's just Scarlett Johansson's voice, and yet she's there in every scene. Well, she captures all of the inflections in human speech. Yeah. Whether, you know, where she breathes, or whether she ums and ahs while she's pondering or thinking about something. Yeah. Whether she's already completely thought out the entire sentence ahead of her, but it's the way that she then delivers it to Theodore that brings that sort of, that human interaction to life. Yeah, it's just... I, you you can't help when you're wa when you're watching this film you can't help but look at your own relationships that you have with other people you know like we said the film starts with people unable to communicate with each other so i started to question myself do i communicate with people enough you know am i communicating too much and as the film starts to as the film starts to go on you start to see the problems in their relationships that they have and the, the situations that develop obviously from these awkward situations. And I used to, I started to sit there thinking, you know, I need I need to do more. I need to do le less of that you know, and a little bit more of this. And it just, you evolve as well as watching Theodore and Samantha evolve. It's a dark and shiny place. My dear, I'm safe and where a million miles away. There are so many scenes, so many memorable scenes in this film that it's really hard just to choose one. Mm. Uh, I really, as an avid video game player, yeah. I love the. Uh, there's been lots of rumors about the Microsoft uh, Luma Room, yeah. which is basically like a projector that instead of going onto your TV screen, just projects into your entire living room or your play space. Yeah. And I love actually seeing this in, in person in the film where he's playing a video game. There's no controller. He's yeah. doing everything with his hands yeah. and everything's just illuminated there. And I just love this foul mouthed <laughs> alien creature that just berates him with vulgar, vulgar language. And the only way to get past him is to respond in kind. I need to find my ship to get off this planet. Fuck you, shithead, fuckface, fuckhead. Okay, but do you know how to get out of here? Fuck you, shithead, fuckface. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> Whether that's just a commentary on online gaming interactions, which pretty much is like 80% of the time, um, I just liked that. It kind of set that sort of the near future. Yeah. And I also just love the way that, that, that it plays out. I, I love that sequence as well because just like with Samantha, the, the, the alien creature just seems so real. Oh, I've got just the place. Who is that talking? Oh, that's my friend Samantha. Is she a girl? Yeah. I hate women. All they do is cry all the time. <laughs> that's not true. You know, men cry too. I actually like crying sometimes. It feels good. I didn't know you were a little pussy. Is that why you don't have a girlfriend? I'll go out that day girl and fuck her brains out and show you how it's done. You can watch him cry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the other scenes that, that did make me laugh, and that's to also say, this film is is filled with some very good dark comedy moments that will make you laugh. Yeah. There's a scene when Theodore's on the beach and Samantha is is pondering, you know, as an AI, how strange humans actually are in their physical appearance, and she starts describing that you know what if what if our 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 anuses were in our armpits, and so she then goes, "Hey Theodore, I've I've sent you a picture," and he opens it up, and it's basically anal armpit sex. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, you filthy minx, <laughs> and that is also to go on to say that. This is a very much adult film. There are 
at least three sex scenes in the film. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and quite importantly, during the first sexual encounter between Theodore and Samantha, it fades to black, and yeah. we just hear their their um their dialogue basically yeah, yeah. and the, and their pleasure and it's just it's very subtly done i mean it's awkward when you're sat in a in a if you're watching it in the night and it's a, just a dark room and all you can hear is the sex groaning coming from you from your tv set but it it just brings you that extra level into their characters even though you don't see it the intimacy is still there and yeah. that's what brings you into these characters and the humor that is in there just makes it feel more real there's so many great scenes in the film. It's hard to pick any one that stands out the most. Uh, for me, one scene that stood stood out was Chris Pratt's dialogue with Theodore. Theodore has just finished writing a letter and the camera pans and Chris Pratt is behind him and has been reading the letter. And he just starts talking to Theodore about how it, the letter is so beautiful that Theodore is not only part man, you are part man and part woman. Mm -hmm. Like there's an inner part. It's woman. Thank you. It's a compliment. <laughs> I, I was lost for a second, but you brought me right back in. Oh, <laughs> amazing. I highly, highly recommend you go out and watch a copy of her, whether you're single whether you're in a relationship, whether you're going through a divorce or a breakup, her will talk to you. It talks, in my opinion, should talk to every single human being alive mm. because it encompasses everything that makes us human. And at, the, and at the central theme of the film, we have an AI that's learning what it is to be human and how to communicate with us being as 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 we are and we are not infinite like a computer like yeah. an ai will exist forever especially if it has managed to escape the confines of its physical parameters yeah it talks to everyone i it is i could you could say i mean it is a, an emotionally charged film without a doubt the film will hit you where it hurts mm. emotionally it will punch you in the gut and leave you winded for for hours and hours afterwards and it's a good thing because it makes you feel and it makes you know that you're alive. And in my opinion, the fundamental final existence of why we are all here is for joy. So like the character says in the film, fuck it. I just come to realize that we're only here briefly. And while I'm here, I, I want to allow myself joy. So fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely check out her. It's a masterpiece of filmmaking. I love the script, story, acting, music, editing, everything about it. Highly rated. I definitely recommend this movie as well. The only, the only people I would say that should not watch this film are people who are unattached from their emotions. If you, if you don't care about love or the situations or the interact interactions with other human beings, you will not get anything from this film. You will sit there and go, oh, it's just so fucking full of shit. And blah, 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 blah. Well, you're emotionally dead. Get the fuck out. I don't want to talk to you. If you actually have a single emotional bone in your body, it will make that bone grow and you will, like me, blubber all the way through it. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Important to prioritize. I can't even prioritize between video games and internet porn.